Homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about Joseph Smith's Patriarchal Blessing and some of the things that are in there. And uh, this was brought to my attention by Green Tree. Uh, in a comment, she said, what do you think of all the talk about the return of Joseph Smith? We know he will be in Adam on Ayaman, but will he return even earlier than that? Are you aware of the promises said in his Patriarchal Blessing? Now, as you can see, this was three months ago. She's reminded me a couple times <laughs> to look into this. And um, I don't know why this is the talk right now. I don't know who's talking about it. But I came across something as I was looking at Doctrines of Salvation by Joseph Fielding Smith. It's uh, Doctrines of Salvation, Volume 2. Okay. And we're on page 299. Okay. So... I think this will answer part of the question. Well, this may just full on just explain it. So he's, it's this section is called, is, the re is resurrection going on now? And then uh, President Smith says, it is the opinion of some that the resurrection is going on all the time now, but this is purely speculation without warrant in the scriptures. It is true that the Lord has power to call forth any person or persons from the dead as he may desire, especially if they have a mission to perform, which would require their resurrection. For example, we have the cases of Peter, James, and Moroni. We are given to understand that the first resurrection, yet future, <clears throat> which means the coming forth of the righteous, will take place at one particular time. So see, this is kind of interesting here because I didn't know. Okay, well, just look what he said. So at one particular time, which is when our Savior shall appear in the clouds of heaven, when he shall return to reign. Now, see, this right here is interesting because Joseph Fielding Smith is saying that it's probably going to happen at one particular time, all the righteous, when Christ is already coming down. Uh, in the clouds of heaven. Now, when we think about Adam and I Amen, it seems to me that you would probably need to be resurrected in a resurrected state if you've already passed away in order to be present and then to participate in the activities at Adam and I Amen, right? That's what I've always assumed. So for that reason, I thought, well, maybe Adam and I Amen is when the resurrection takes place. Or maybe uh, only certain people go to Adam on Diamond, which from what we've uh, read, if you go to my playlist called Adam on Diamond, it seems like all the righteous, uh, whether you've had keys, but also if you're just righteous, you'll participate in some way. And that there will be multiple sessions. It's not all going to be in the Valley of Adam on Diamond. Uh, according to Bruce R. McConkie and Millennial Messiah, he'll go from continent to continent. So, but we do know that prophets and key holders of the past are going to be there. So, so you would think that they're going to be resurrected in order to do that. So I don't know how you consolidate the two things. Adam and Amin in what President Smith is saying here, that it would probably be at one particular time as Christ is coming down in the clouds. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not prepared to say. But anyway, if he says for us to speculate whether or not the prophet Joseph Smith, Hiram Smith, Brigham Young, and others have been called forth without any revelation from the Lord is merely supposition. When the Lord wants any of these men, He has the power to call them. But the first resurrection, with which we have any future concern, will commence when Christ comes. So. Uh, I think that might be a pretty good answer. Okay, Th this is from another president of the church, another prophet who carries the same name, Joseph Smith, right? So uh, let's take a look at the patriarchal blessing in question. It, it appears that there might be a couple. In another comment, Green Tree said three, but I think the one that she's wanting to look at is this one right here so let's read through it and let's see what it says 
This is okay. So this is from uh, the Joseph Smith in Emma Hale Smith Historical Society. So this, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know anything about this society. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think they're uh, affiliated with the church. Uh, they might be. Let's see. Let, let's try and find out. Maybe I, I should have done that before I started this. Um, okay. The Joseph Smith and Emma Hale Smith Society. The Joseph Smith and Emma Hale Smith Society. What the heck is this? Um, I'm not seeing anything right off the bat. So already, this, for me, is in question. Just because I don't know who these people are. I don't know who they are. News, bios contact us office officers let's look at this michael a kennedy third great grandson of joseph and joseph smith and emma hale uh executive producer of the film productions time and teachings of the prophet joseph smith children of joseph um he has lectured extensively throughout the united states canada england south america and australia on Smith family history and LDS church history. So are these people members of the church? I don't know. Looks like they're all related in some way. Well, okay. So, so I don't know. I don't know. I would, I would like it a lot better if this was like in the Joseph Smith papers, which this here is this, this blessing um, maybe you can find it there, but I, okay. So anyway, let's just read it. Let's just give it the benefit of the benefit of a doubt for right now. Joseph, my son, I lay my hands upon thy head in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to confirm upon thee a father's blessing. The Lord thy God has called thee by name out of the heavens. Thou hast heard his voice from on high from time to time, even in thy youth. The hand of the angel of his presence has been extended toward thee by which thou hast been lifted up and sustained. Yea, the Lord has delivered thee from the hands of thine enemies, and thou hast made and that and thou hast been made to rejoice in his salvation. Thou hast sought to know his ways, and from thy childhood thou hast meditated much upon the great things of his law. Thou hast suffered much in thy youth, in the poverty and afflictions of thy father's family have been a grief to thy soul. Thou hast desired to see them delivered from bondage, for thou hast loved them uh, with a perfect love. Thou hast stood by thy father, and like Shem, uh, which by the way, uh, I've done a video, I think a couple videos, how uh, th there seems to be evidence that Shem and Melchizedek are actually the same person, but just do a search on my channel for Shem, and it'll pull that up. Uh, so thou hast stood by thy father and like Shem would have covered his nakedness rather than see him exposed to shame. When the daughters of the Gentiles laughed, thy heart has been moved with a just anger to avenge thy kindred. Thou hast been an obedient son, the commands of thy father and the reproofs of thy mother thou hast respected and obeyed. For all these things, the Lord my God will bless thee. Thou hast been called even in thy youth to the great work of the Lord to do a work in this generation which no man would do as thyself, in all things according to the will of the Lord. A marvelous work and a wonder has the Lord wrought by thy hand, even that which shall prepare the way for the remnants of his people to come in among the Gentiles with their fullness as the tribes of Israel are restored. I bless thee with the blessing of thy fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and even the blessings of thy father Joseph, the son of Jacob. Behold, he looked after his posterity in the last days, uh, when they should be scattered and driven by the Gentiles, and wept before the Lord. He sought diligently to know from whence the son, 
should come who should bring forth the word of the Lord, by which they might be enlightened and brought back to the true fold. And his eyes beheld thee, my son. His heart rejoiced, and his soul was satisfied. And he said, As my blessings are to extend to the utmost bounds of the everlasting hills, as my father's blessing prevailed above the blessings of his progenitor, and as my branches are to run over the wall, and my seed are are to inherit the choice land whereon the Zion of God shall stand in the last days, from among my seed, scattered with the Gentiles, shall a choice seer arise, whose bow shall be as a fountain of truth, whose loins shall be girded with the girdle of righteousness, whose hands shall be lifted with acceptance before the God of Jacob to turn away his anger from his anointed, whose heart shall meditate great wisdom, whose intelligence shall circumscribe and comprehend the deep things of God, in whose mouth shall utter the law of the just. His feet shall stand upon the neck of his enemies, and he shall walk upon the ashes of those who seek his destruction. With wine and oil shall he be sustained, and <clears throat> he shall feed upon the heritage of Jacob his father. The, the just shall desire, desire his society, and the upright in heart shall be his companions. No weapon formed against him shall prosper, and though the wicked mar him for a little season, he shall be like one rising up in the heat of wine. He shall roar in his strength, and the Lord shall put to flight his persecutors. He shall be blessed like the fruitful olive, and his memory shall be as sweet as the choice cluster of the first ripe grapes. Like a sheaf fully ripe, gathered into the garner, so shall he stand before the Lord, having produced a hundredfold. Uh, thus spake my father Joseph, therefore my son, I know for a surety that those things will be fulfilled, and I confirm upon thee all these blessings. Uh, thou shalt do the work which the Lord shall command thee. Thou shalt hold the keys of this ministry, even the presidency of this church, both in time and in eternity. Thy heart shall be enlarged, and thou shalt be able to fill up the measure of thy days according to the will of the Lord. Thou shalt speak the word of the Lord, and the earth shall tremble, the mountains shall move, and the rivers shall turn out of their course. Thou shalt escape the edge of the sword, and put to flight the armies of the wicked. Uh, at thy word the lame shall walk, the deaf shall hear, the blind shall see. Thou shalt be gathered to Zion in the goodly land. Thou shalt enjoy thine inheritance. Uh, thy children and thy children's children to the latest generation. For thy name and the names of thy posterity <clears throat> shall be recorded in the book of the Lord, even in the book of blessings and genealogies for their joy and benefit forever. And now, my son, what more shall I say? Thou art as a fruitful olive and a choice vine. Thou shalt be laden with precious fruit. Thousands and tens of thousands shall come to, no to a knowledge of the truth th through thy ministry, and thou shalt rejoice with them in the celestial kingdom. Okay, here, here, this last paragraph here, I think this is the one that's causing the excitement. Thou shalt stand upon the earth when it shall reel to and fro as a drunken man, and be removed out of its place. Thou shalt stand when the mighty judgments go forth to the destruction of the wicked. Thou shalt stand on Mount Zion when the tribes of Jacob come shouting from the north, <clears throat> and with thy brethren, the sons of Ephraim, crown them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thou shalt see thy Redeemer come in the clouds of heaven, and with the just receive the hallowed throngs with shouts of alleluias. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, there are incredible things in here. Now, there was also a lot of symbolism in here. Uh, we know that in the end, he didn't escape all of his enemies. In the end, he was martyred, right? Um, and this portion up here was talking a lot about escaping and overcoming and uh, enemies, and, and he did, <clears throat> but not not in the end. Um, when it comes to this part down here, well, he was martyred, and so to make this statement true, e either he'll 
be resurrected at. I mean, he could be resurrected now for any for, for all anybody knows, uh, or he'll be resurrected just before Adam on Diamond, if it hasn't happened already. At least the first sessions of it, if they haven't happened already. So, for example, if he was resurrected at Adam on Diamond, then yeah, he would be on the Earth to see. Um, these different things, the, the mighty judgments go forth to the destruction of the wicked, um, uh, the earth reeling to and fro and removed out of its place, and then seeing the re Redeemer come in the clouds of heaven. <clears throat> so could be that he's already resurrected, could be that he'll be resurrected at the time of Adam on Diamond, because uh, that comes before uh, Christ coming down in the clouds. Um, or he may he may come he may uh, be resurrected just like Joseph Fielding Smith said. Uh, it seems to be his opinion that all this would just take place when Christ is coming down uh, in the clouds of heaven, and that can make all this true as well. <clears throat> you see, uh, Joseph Smith being there uh, when Christ is coming down, yeah, uh, in the clouds of heaven, the earth will be in a state of reeling to and fro. Uh, It'll be removed out of its place. Mighty judgments will have gone forth to the destruction of the wicked. Um, let's see. Standing on Mount Zion where the tribes of Jacob shouting from the north. Now, you know my opinion about the, tri the ten lost tribes. There's the two camps. There's the people that think that there's a main group. They're hidden to the rest of human civilization. They're either somewhere in the earth or they're translated. They're in a maybe with the city of Enoch or their own place. Uh, or there's all sorts of things to explain where they are. I'm not of that opinion. I believe that they have been gathered in the, just through the process of time, that most of them primarily went to the north, up into um, Europe, uh, Eastern, or sorry, Western Asia, Russia, those kind of areas. And then other smaller groups have gone throughout the world. So I wouldn't be surprised if during his lifetime, uh, some of those other tribes came, like just individual members of those tribes. Or when he's resurrected, uh, whether now or at Amande Amen, or at the time that Christ comes down, well, definitely by that time, he'll have seen the other tribes come. Now, if you're new to the channel, let me show you something. We did... Um, I did an anonymous poll where I was trying to get a feel for um, what tribe everyone belonged to that wanted to participate in the in the poll. I used Google Forms. Looks like we probably received a few more uh, responses since that time. So here's the pie chart. This area, the 91.6% is Ephraim. The next biggest is this small little uh, lime colored portion that's Manasseh at 4.2%, <clears throat> which surprised me. Uh, I thought that there would be more Manasseh. And then when we look at other responses, we have seven who say that in their patriarchal blessing, they're just assigned to Joseph, not specifically Ephraim or Manasseh, which I didn't even know was possible until now. Uh, four with Benjamin, two for Levi, two for Judah, one with Reuben, one with Simeon, one with Dan, one with Gad, one with Issachar. So, and, uh, you know, this isn't representative of the entire world, but I think it does give us a little bit of a sense uh, what's going on. So we definitely have other tribes out there. It'd be interesting to go... Um, to other nations, uh, specifically like Eastern Europe, because that's where Sister Nelson had her experience where he, she met somebody from all the different tribes uh, in Russia, except for Levi. And then when they went to Armenia, there was someone from Levi that was there. So that's my opinion. And Joseph Smith would indeed see that uh, when he goes to Adam on Diamond or when he sees Christ coming down in the clouds. So um, I don't make too much out of this. I can see why some people would kind of run with this, and that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their own beliefs. 
But I, I think I'm just going to go with what uh, Joseph Fielding Smith said, that most likely everyone's going to be resurrected at the same time as Christ is coming down from the clouds. Although I am still confused how that relates to Adam on Diamond. I, I don't understand that part at all whatsoever. So, um, yeah, because I, because I think the way that we all picture it is when Christ is coming down in the clouds, it's like a one day event, but we do know that there's going to be the sign of the son of man and there's going to be time for people to speculate what it is. If it's a planet, a comet, whatever. Um, so maybe, you know, maybe it's a process. Maybe, maybe it doesn't take place over just a day. Maybe as the Lord approaches the earth with his, his hosts, uh, or whatever, whatever, however he's traveling, um, maybe it takes time. So maybe as the sign of the Son of Man has appeared, maybe it's like really far off in the distance and you can only see it with telescopes at first. So maybe at that time, you know, um, the resurrection starts, uh, Adam and Adam on Diamond happens. So say that maybe it takes course over, uh, maybe, maybe it all takes place over the course of like a year or maybe two years. You know, we, we just recently had a very strange um, movie that came out on Netflix called uh, Don't Look Up. So there's been a lot of, in Hollywood, there's just been a crazy amount, a crazy amount of apocalyptic movies and movies that have to do with the end of the world. And uh, this is one of the newer ones that came out late last year. Don't look up. It was about a basically um, a meteor that was headed toward Earth, and it was going to be world-ending. And these two, you know, this is a college professor and one of his students, and they're trying to like warn the world, but everyone's just kind of making a joke out of it. This, the president of the United States isn't. I didn't watch the whole movie, by the way. Um, it's you know it's kind of a bad movie but as far as like it's rated r and <laughs> just we couldn't do it don't watch it it's bad yeah my wife just said don't watch it it's bad so when well, we saw the first part and um you know i i really do think that in pop culture they they like to make reference to some of these things i think it's some of it is part of the adversary's plan um but anyway, I've done videos about that. So anyway, the point is, what if, what if like the space agencies of the world right now are aware of some object that's really far out there? Would that count as the beginning stages of the end, right? So I, I don't know. It's all just speculation. Don't know. But uh, Green Tree... Those are my thoughts. I'm not going to read this blessing because I kind of skimmed through it and I didn't really see anything stand out like in this one right here. Again, uh, I let's see. Oh, look at the bottom here. It has a reference. So they're saying Joseph Smith Jr. dot org is saying Joseph Smith Sr. Patriarchal Blessing Book Number One Historical Department, The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, Salt Lake City, Utah. Okay, so. There's actually enough here to where I think they're probably legitimate. So, but but I'm not going to like look at this and be like, oh my gosh, he, he must already be here or he's going to be here. Uh, just, I mean, who knows? I don't know. But it, it is interesting. It was a good blessing. Uh, it, was, it was really sweet to hear some of these things here. Uh, Joseph Smith Sr. acknowledging that Joseph Smith had to he grew up in poverty and it was hard for him and just acknowledging that and there's a lot of tenderness in this and it was very inspiring all right that's going to be it for this one so if you haven't already please make sure to subscribe like this video if you liked it leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below also make sure to share this and i'll talk to you guys later